Two years ago, Assassin's Creed had its 10th anniversary, and I was fortunate enough that Ubisoft asked me to supply all of the Assassin's Creed costumes that I've made for them for a lineup in display cases at Gamescom in Cologne, and they were also at Paris Games Week. Unpacking that crate at Gamescom with all of the costumes that were in there to put them up on the mannequins for the display at Gamescom was just intense. I remember putting them up and it was a lot of work actually to put up all of these costumes onto these mannequins. And I remember when, when I was done and uh, I sat down in front of them and then the, the crew came in to put the glass in front of them and uh, put up the, the signs behind them and everything. And I don't know, it was, it was such a special moment to see uh, literally blood, sweat and tears that, that went into every single one of these things and all the memories and all the experiences that you've had with them and the creative growth that you've gone through uh, to get to that point. I mean, maybe it's kind of weird to say that of your own work, that it's, that it, that it's good or something, but it's, it was just really quite impressive to see all of them next to each other. Last day of Gamescom, I didn't go into costume and I had the time to just stand in front of the, the display with the eight costumes and to see the reactions of the people uh, that were there seeing them and they were taking pictures. That was one of the most epic moments of my life on the, the, the creative side. I really wanted to try and, and recreate uh, Altair, the first one, uh, with the skill set that you've acquired uh, in, in a decade's uh, worth of experience. And it's always been kind of like a, a dream, especially after putting up all the, uh, the costumes on display for Gamescom. If you look at the first costume, it's not bad, but you can see that it was a hobby project. If you look at the, the whole look of the costume, I think it's still, it's still pretty good. The hood, the shape of everything, it just, it just works really well. It was just more on a technical level that I thought, hmm, I really want to do certain things differently. And it's pretty amazing to see how you how you tackle the, the creative problems that you come across when you when you make a costume like this. And not just the, the, the props look different now, it's it's also the sewing and the textiles that I've used for the robes, they, they're much heavier, it all just falls a lot better. If you look at the hidden blade, I always use like a spring inside of them and then when you pull the string, uh, the blade comes out and when you, you make a fist, it goes back in. But it's really just a, a PVC tube with aluminum thingy in it and it just, yeah, it's lacking just about every single detail that you could possibly uh, put into it. So yeah, I hope that you like the version that I did now, which still uh, uses the spring and, and the string to it, but the whole thing just looks a little differently. Yeah, it's, it's really fun to, to see these things together, to compare the two. Uh, and then, yeah, you, it's, it's hard to not see that a lot can happen in 10 years, uh, really. So it's been a fun ride and I'm really enjoying this project.
Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, the video documentary making of Altair version 2.0. And uh, if you want to stay up to date with RBF Productions and L, and if you want to stay tuned with anything related that we're doing, costumes, props, decor, set pieces, or whatever, uh, you can find us on our own website. That's the only official source for everything related to RBF Productions and L. See you out there.